Hey everybody, this is Mark Hine. The purpose of this video is to let you know that Dr. Champion and his 33A group have produced a major breakthrough in the financial viability of low energy nuclear transmutation. But before I do anything else, I want to express my gratitude and the gratitude of my partners, Scott and Rob and Jenna, to Dr. Champion for the opportunity to participate in validating his technological discoveries. This is hands down the most exciting endeavor in which I've had, had the privilege to be involved. And the first time I realized I was actually making new metal, uh, it was a truly exciting moment for me. To be involved in any way with a scientific breakthrough of such magnitude is an incredible privilege. Thank you, Dr. Champion. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the doc was savagely attacked and brutally beaten nearly to death a few years ago. He survived the murder attempt, but the extent of his brain trauma left him unable to perform the kind of work his research requires. His vision is badly impaired, as is his physical balance. To a lesser degree, his ability to speak is also impaired. Fortunately for all of us, his intellect is still intact. Where someone else might have given up, he came up with a way to get the work done in spite of his physical limitations. When he got out of the hospital, he put the word out to his network of licensees and other followers that if they were willing to buy licenses for the 303 technology, he would handle the science directing them in the development of a new PRT implementation, while in return they would be his eyes, arms, and legs to build and test the latest version of transmutation equipment. After the 303 group came the 33 group. We made test runs on the pack saddle ore and reported the results. Every day he spoke with each of the backyard chemists that was actively making a test run. He collected our observations, made corrections, and made sure that what was discovered by one team was communicated to the rest. This approach is not simple or easy, but when rigorously executed, it is extremely powerful. We learned a lot, and we learned it quickly, and we produced results. We've now been working daily with Dr. Champion and the other members of the 33 group for the last three months to develop methods and procedures for the application of Dr. Champion's phonon resonance technology to a very special graphite ore from Texas. The graphite comes from Pack Saddle Mountain, a 4.3 million year old graphite schist located outside San Antonio, Texas. Since its discovery by the Spanish, no one has found a way to profitably mine the mountain until now. The LENC, Low Energy Nuclear Change LLC, was formed by Dr. Champion to work with exactly this kind of challenging material. Converting this mineralized graphite to precious metals with PRT is now a done deal. We are successful where all others have failed. With this latest PRT methodology, we're seeing much larger yields than earlier methods with a much shorter cycle time. A uh, batch completes in about four hours instead of days or weeks. It does not require a specific source metal to be converted to a specific output metal. We can vary the range of elements produced by adjusting process variables. As we continue to test and learn, we're better able to control the number of metals being produced simultaneously. Eventually, it may be possible to produce a single metal on a run as our control continues to improve. Perhaps most importantly, this new method is much better suited to scaling up the batch size, which was a major limit in some of the earlier methods. Through the proper application of phonon resonance technology, we're able to convert the raw, essentially worthless pack saddle ore into any metals we choose. To date, we've successfully produced gold, silver, palladium, rhodium, ruthenium, platinum, osmium, and iridium. And the presence of these metals have been verified variously by stannous chloride testing, x-ray fluorescence tests, fire assay, inductive coupled plasma tests, and most recently, spectral analysis performed at Washington University in St. Louis. The results from initial XRF and spectral scans at Washington University are consistent with the earlier analyses. We currently have a fire assay from a refiner estimating the amount of gold in the processed ore to be around 61 ounces per ton. At 61 ounces of gold per ton, 
this would be by far the richest gold mine in the world without even considering the large quantities of rhodium and palladium present in the same processed ore. In addition to the negotiations with the first refiner, we recently shipped a kilo of processed ore to the Las Vegas branch of North Texas Refining for testing and possible sale. It was our expectation that their results would be consistent with previous testing and that they would make an offer to purchase the metal. It turns out that the kilo of metal was returned untested. It didn't fit their profile. In other words, it wasn't jewelry to be melted down. And this is turning out to be a problem that we had not expected. The method we've been using leaves us with mixed metal and powder form. Looking at the assays, the problem is there's six different precious metals in roughly equal amounts. LENC is the largest mining company in the excuse me the largest transmutation mining company in the world and we plan to make it possible for the USA to pay off the national debt in short order not to mention bringing a trillion dollar business to Texas uh, in order to do that we're going to have to have somebody actually refine the metal or we're going to have to find um, a way to divide it up ourselves and make it acceptable to them but you know, if you're out there and you hear this and you're a refiner and you're not scared by rhodium and ruthenium, give us a call. So the rest of this video is sort of a collection of snapshots made with my 20 power camera. These are a lot of pictures of metals and other materials that looked interesting during processing and I'll explain what Team Napa thinks you're looking at as we go. Uh, this is the surface of the first transmutation run at the end of the run. Yep, according to the stannous chloride, those are little nuggets of gold chloride. The background is brown, viewed through a yellow liquid. This is where it looks green. Uh, this is the end of the run after batch 3, more gold chloride. The white dots are silver chloride, and the soup is a mixture of mostly palladium chloride along with gold, silver, platinum, and so on. This is from the fourth batch. The big lump is carbon. The reason I'm showing this is because of the difference camera settings make. This is too much light, and you can see how the gold is flaring and exaggerated. If you close the iris a little, then the gold looks right, but everything else disappears against the black background of graphite. And you trick it back a little bit, and this is about what you see with the naked eye, and you actually have that in the picture. This is the same batch, but in this area, too much light reveals that the soup isn't uniform. Probably silver chloride and rhodium chloride mixed together. You can see the two different colors, the shades there. Uh, this is from an early session of playing with a torch. It, we're trying to make a bead. Uh, not as easy as we thought it was. And that's the same slag, a slightly different angle and exposure. Uh, this is gold and palladium on a rubber spatula blade. As we were separating the processed ore to find different metals, the soft rubber spatula we were using repeatedly became coated and um, just uh, permeated with different noble metals. Uh, this is another torch run, more slag. Uh, this was more interesting. It had some uh, actual gold bubbles and the little red dots might be ruthenium chloride and I'm not sure what to make of the purple and violet tones. Uh, there is ruthenium in the XR XRF assay. And these are some of the zinc pieces that we've been using to drop the metals from the aqua regia after the transmutation process. Some of the metals stick to the zinc and the rest settle to the bottom of the beaker. The first ones here were pulled out just as the gold finished precipitating so that I could have some shiny gold to show y'all. Um, I left this piece of zinc in until everything had been precipitated and it was the only zinc in there so that's why it has stuff all over it. Um, the white appears to be palladium and silver oxide. The gold is actually that brown stuff on the surface of the white. and. The black spots are rhodium oxide plated directly onto the zinc surface. Rhodium oxide is not soluble in aqua regia, so there are zinc mesas under the black and the areas around the mesas are eroded to a depth of about 5 millimeters while being filled with the white material. Uh, the brown coloring on the surface 
of the white material is the gold. Uh, it was probably plated initially on the zinc surface and then as the the zinc was broken down and taken into solution and the uh, chlorides uh, and the uh, excuse me the silver uh, oxide and palladium actually uh, plated in there and filled in it sort of just grew up on top of it um, this is gold chloride mixed with palladium oxide and silver oxide um, and then these are pure gold oxide crystals that I extracted from the material in the previous pictures and this is a little three millimeter long nugget of gold that came right out just like that and these are little blobs of gold that appear during the precipitation of the metal uh, they're a mixture of gold and something uh, we scoop these out with a wire mesh strainer uh, when we test them with stannous chloride um, about half of it is gold and the other half doesn't react we're still figuring that out and if you wait and let them dry out they look like this so that's what it looks like doing this stuff um, bear in mind that's all of that came from about a half a kilo of uh, pack saddle ore uh, over a period of you know a week of, of playing with it this is amazing stuff and um, we're all having a good time making gold uh, best wishes to you all and I'll be back soon <laughs>